Psycho Man and Super Scroll gameplay revealed. Persistent charge issue still rages on. Fury buff removed from Act 7.1. And Black Panther buff coming soon. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Marvel Contest of Champions News show for Wednesday. Hope you're doing well. We've got lots to go over in today's edition. And also, don't forget to hit the like button and as well the subscribe button. We're trying to get to this year at least 70,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. It can only be done with help with everybody, so make sure to hit the subscribe button, which is very, very important. And that's very important to mention because 48.4% of people are not subscribed to my channel that do watch my content. So please consider hitting that subscribe button because it is free. But what is not free, and a massive thank you to those that support this channel through the medium of Patreon and YouTube membership services. Thank you so much to allow and help towards this being my full-time gig, my full-time job. Thank you so much. And also, those that support over on Twitch. Thanks very much to those that give the Prime Gaming each month. If you have Amazon Prime, you can give a free Twitch sub. It doesn't have to be to me, but it massively helps out. Those that do Tier 1 subs, those that do Gifted subs, and also those that give bits and other types of things as well. Thank you so much for the support over there on twitch.tv slash richthemanlive. And if you don't know, we'll be doing a lot of grinding of Act 7.1 over on Twitch, and I'm sure we'll be doing a lot more of the event quest for this month, so look forward to seeing you there. Now, we kick off Marvel Contest of Champions news today, talking about the persistent charges issue. It's very hard to see, say where the problem lies, and as well, what is going on with different champions. I've had people say that they've had problems with Corvus, Aegon, and a whole plethora of champions that persist from fight to fight. And whether or not this is device specific, it is yet to be known. But some people are pointing out here that they are using an iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is a phone that we've talked a lot about on this channel and thinks will continue. A lot of devices still aren't properly optimized, whether or not it's Android or iOS. A lot of them not very well optimized uh, for the game, including a lot of the, uh, the big new ones, big new devices. But when it comes to persistent charges, very, very important to mention. As of yesterday, some devices, and I would say if you are giving feedback to the developer, please put the device that you're using because it does help the developer narrow down where the problem is. However, though, in this case, it may be a lot more random than you think. On screen at the moment, you're seeing Aegon not starting with persistent charges. You're seeing Nick Fury go straight into life model decoy. And that is just uh, a small little section. And as, as of yesterday, people are giving that level of feedback to say, what is going on? So, again, same issue with uh, the circumstances of uh, persistent charges not being there, especially as of yesterday. We've got Immortal Hulk that's been affected. We've got Guillotine 2099 being affected. We've got Professor X being affected. There's a massive post, link is in the description to this forum thread, uh, about this because it's crazy. So Ams put, puts the question to Command Mike, what I don't understand is why some of us are affected and some are unaffected. Uh, Total Alliance makes the issue is not for everybody, and it's not for me. No matter the operating system, Android iOS, some are affected, some aren't. Very weird. I just wish my Gate in 2020 worked because I need her for some uh, for that APOC boss. Response to Command Mike, this is the big question and what is making this so hard to track down? People that were affected later are not, and some never see this issue at all. I tested all my persistent char charge champs and found nothing at all. We have made no changes and haven't released a fixed, but as you saw yourself later, the problem vanished. I've spoken to the team about this and we're looking for some more information that would be very great, for, very helpful if you can provide. Please look at the thread for more questions. And this is the thing, the Kabam are a bit stumped by this and trying to find a logical solution is not there. So they've set up missing persistent charges, help find the cause of the bug. Now links are in the description to this MCOC journal video for Psycho Man and Super Scroll in action, their gameplay. Psycho Man looks pretty cool with this kind of weird control box that is kind of uh, hovering and levitating, if you will, between the different types. I like the fact that wherever kind of one you're in, it's the color as opposed to you concentrating on like one specific area. Uh, at least you can say that the, the thing above your head, uh, well, thing to the, to the rear of your head, is the correct kind of control box. 
And there's some nice rotations here on, on the champion. I am looking forward to playing this champion with the uh, CCP beta and whether or not it's, uh, it's any good. But that's the thing. With this, I'm more kind of interested with the switching of different modes and as well the firing of the SP2 to get the Fury charge. Fury charge. Fury buff even. As uh, it just looks... Well, the animations. I tell you what. Come on, smack it out of the park when it comes to animations. But look, that's the Fury there grabbed. That takes up some nice damage, to be honest. And I would be quite interested to, uh, to kind of figure out that rotation and uh, damage output more. But there are a lot of utility factors to Psycho Man. They put him on the front foot of damage, but as well given those utility factors of uh, power control and various different other things. But yeah, the SPs look uh, pretty darn nice as well. <laughs> uh, get big, go small. It's kind of like it reminds me of like what Ant-Man should really be, but it's all good. Next up is Super Scroll. Super Scroll is one of these ones that will be hopefully a big damage dealer. Although, it's just seen where the stacks go with those Fury damage and the extent of damage that you can do with it. Because like we've got on the left side, we've got four stacks of Fury. We've then got ourselves uh, you know, a good amount of power gain as well. That Wow, it's quick to get to an SP3, which is amazing. So we're just quickly up to SP3. The animations, again, look really good. Especially with the incorporation of uh, different characters from Invisible Woman, Thing, Human Torch, and um, and as well, Reed Richards. But yeah, the damage looks good. The aptitude getting up to an SP3 is very helpful. So that's good. Uh, and yeah, just looks like a nice uh, load of damage rotation. It'd just be interesting to see this at a higher rarity. Let's now move on to Act 7.1, Missing Fury Buff. Now, for me, I'm only using about two champions at a six star, as most of my roster is, five, I've got a better scope of five stars than I have of six stars. I've got myself Black Widow, Clairvoyant, Warlock, and uh, Corvus as six stars, which, yeah, for sure, I'd, I'd use, but my 565 counterparts are ones that I'd probably use more, especially with um, just just enjoyment factors and damage output that they can do as opposed to rank 2 them and stuff like that. So when it comes to uh, where is this missing Fury buff? Because someone said I noticed that the 6 star champions no longer have a Fury buff in Act 7.1. Is this a bug? I'm playing Act 7.1.6, the Footloose Path. Anyone else see this? And then maybe many people are coming out to kind of like just, you know, question whether or not Kabam are doing this. Is it wrong? Is it right? What's going on? And we need some answers. And the answer is here from Kabam Boo saying some of you have got got it. So uh, the Fury icon has been removed. That is correct. But you are definitely receiving a boost. Please let us know if you're still noticing any discrepancies or have any further questions. That can be like a factor of kind of, I, I, I would say mistrust to a degree. Because at the end of the day, something was there that's in, then it's kind of like it's gone all of a sudden. Without any kind of like notice or any kind of patch notes or information or change log. Uh, can result in players just going, I'm not sure about this chief, but kind of concerned. I can imagine that when there's certain circumstances, and I'll give you a good example. Like having Warlock on a route with the Ultron Synergy where you get up a Fury buff. And say so using a six star version, you would be scaling two fury buffs, or it will be a passive. I think it's a passive fury. So if you go on the route that I'm thinking of, which is in 7.1.4, and you're doing the juggernaut fight on one of the routes, anytime that you have an immunity, you get a fury buff. Now we did this last night on stream. So imagine like an extensive amount of fury buffs that are that are coming up. So I don't know whether or not Kabam are kind of thinking like, okay, we've kind of like overdone this with the extent of like how this is done, or maybe this is causing an issue. But to be honest, having no kind of communication on the matter is just a scary time and is just quite unusual. And then many players kind of like speak out about this. Uh, that, is, that is not something to smart about. This is a huge change for select summoners. I was in that boat, but explored it all. Hope you guys uh, go better uh, with announcing it there. This is uh, my uh, uh, my opinion. This is, in my opinion, a problem. Um, yeah, it's it's a tough one. And yeah, the, to point out the obvious, there are some interaction things that will always happen with Furies. If certain champions have Fury interaction, and say that not just the scenario that I mentioned, but in a different scenario, it can be seen as a... I use the term lightly nerf, but specific interaction based problems for something that Kabam have removed. Uh, I can't um, amalgamate it to a nerf because I don't, just don't know if it can be fairly said that because it's not a nerf that we felt 
wide, it will just be singular in this case, or maybe some other champions that are affected by if they get a passive fury or a fury in general, that the champion is of benefit or of loss in this case when it comes to the interaction with, you know, someone saying, when any fury affects, uh, any fury effects affects him regardless of being passive or active if there was a fury it was supposed to affect him the dev team just just didn't think it think of it apparently didn't pay attention to beta testing videos or forum posts so that's just really to do with like nick fury and answer to exactly exactly besides this isn't the big change the only champion affected was nick fury and it wasn't even supposed to affect him so uh this is this is like the morning start interaction and people calling it enough um we apologize for any miscommunication uh, along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feedback. Right. So, yeah, we've had our two cents on that. And just to say that like, there'll be specific interactions that will benefit certain champions. And in other cases, look, it is what it is. And it's annoying not to see it there. But apparently, we still get it. Whether or not you trust that or not, that will be the other thing as well. And now on to one of the most important stories of today. And that is the information that we will be getting a buff to Black Panther. But it's not the Black Panther you might be thinking of. So, um, as Kabam are doing this, we're honoring Black History Month by recognizing strength of our champions and celebrating the origins the, uh, of them becoming cultural icons. Also, just to point out within this, um, there's no Mordo, okay? There's, there's, there's no Mordo with it. Oh, man. I just, it just would have been nice to just put the Mordo in. Um, but it's not there. I still would love to see Misty Knight down the line. I've, I've always said that. I'd love to see Misty Knight be put into uh, into game. Hopefully that'll be something this year. Maybe even next year. But um, yeah. Apart from that, moving on. The most important thing is this little bit here. This little snippet. Uh, work started on Black Panther Classic. So that's the, the buff. So that's coming soon. And Miles is on the list. Miles just needs more love. Because we want to try and get some more VFX love for him too. And I agree, right? If Kabam are going to deliver back in the, um, the the champion, they need to touch in more of the invisibility aspects to um, to, the, to to Miles Morales and as well uh, that Spider Man because that's the thing of setting him apart from all the other Spider Men and and how unique Miles Morales is in comparison to say uh, the Peter Parker version. So I'd just I'd love I'd love to see it in. I'm looking forward to seeing it in. But I want them to do it a little bit more justice, and maybe that's what Kaban Mike is kind of turning into, uh, turning into is uh, is turning to this VFX thing. So hopefully they're adding in more with that. Yes, okay, keeping in line with the idea of the shock stuff and shock damage, but as well kind of tapping into the invisibility, because at times you know it can miss and evade and stuff like that. So it would be of advantage. To do that. Command Mika goes forth to say buffs are on the way. As you know, we've started a long path of buffing more and more champions and have started on a pretty ambitious cadence. I see a lot of people mentioning Mars and Black Panther. I can confirm that work has started on Black Panther Classic first. Um, oh, it's a continued thing. And Miles is definitely on the list, but we want to try and give him more some VFX love. I'd love to see Miles get invisibility added to his kit, but that takes more time. Um, from more peeps and that's true that's that's true and that's the thing um, I think you know when back about 2015 2016 the animations VFX stuff just shows like what command was starting off with what they were developing and as they've gone forward they've kind of challenged themselves more and more to deliver better and better delivery in animations and champions and stuff like that be better if they were working on some other aspects of the game when it comes to stability, bugs, and as well, yeah, compatibility with devices. But still, you can you can't deny Kabam's uh, artistic and as well animations, champion creation, and uh, talents when it comes to that side of things. It's just the other stuff that's a bit questioned. And yes, I'm very much looking forward to Black Panther being buffed, the OG one, and as well Mars Morales. Black Panther Civil War, however, is one that I would have liked to see more because that plays into the Chadwick Boseman side of things. And that hasn't been said about, but like, I really hope that, you know, it is addressed and dealt with. Maybe like uh, a buff, I don't know, now it, it's missed the opportunity. Would it be best to like mark one year? Possibly. That would be good, but we'll have to see what happens down uh, down the line. And I really hope it's on the buff list to be dealt with sooner rather than later. And now on to our final story, which is Arena Predictions. I'm going with a prediction with Yellow Jacket 
of 25 mil. I think if you want to get and secure the champion, 27 mil is going to be fine. I even think that with the changes not even being so amazing, like the changes and improvements in the buff to Yellow Jacket is good, but to be honest, I'm not overly interested in it. I do think that it could even put this champion close to 20 mil mark. But as I said, 25 mil to be safe. 5.5 mil for the 4 star, but again, that could be a little bit lower and just literally be the last milestone and you get it, or the rank reward placement and number and you get it, but we'll have to see. And then finally with Airwalker, I think it's going to be 1.8 mil. Uh, I'd love to say that that would be 2 mil. I mean, you can put, like I normally say, about 2.2 mil in, but i got to be honest with the, the champion as it is with no buff and just the uninterested nature of players surrounding Airwalker, I'm thinking 1.8 mil has, has got to be the most that champion goes for. But all predictions are down below and we'll see what the results have to offer when it comes to Sunday and then the report on Monday's news. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button, subscribe for more content either on Rich's Realm and also check out some other content recently posted up there. Today is going to be a massive day for content. I've got lots of videos planned from counter preparations for Cavalier difficulty, from just champion inter interactions and top champions to use, and as well as side event grind stuff. There's going to be loads of content between now and next week covering a lot of this month's quests and stuff. And uh, and then I'll get back to my making guide stuff, which I was meant to do last month. But I'll see you very soon, later today. Bye-bye.